Just in case you missed it, it's the top five sports talkers of the day. Now, it's time for Dan Barrero's Top 5 at 5. Brought to you by Gutter Helmet of Minnesota. Never clean your gutters again. Learn more at GutterHelmetMN.com. Inbox 530JG at KFAN.com. Let's make this a memorable one. for the crescendo, don't you? This is, awesome. this is just, can't get enough of this. I'm imagining hearing this in the, is it the Sign River, the River Sign? Sane. Sane. Sane River. Which, by the way, was, they, they didn't they, uh, they held, somebody sent a video of the number of, um, of, uh, was it triathloners who threw up yeah. after being there, but. Somebody else also pointed out, well, that happens in a lot of those races. Have you ever you done a triathlon? Yeah, I mean, you they're could, tough. We don't know that that was because of all the poop in the river, but maybe it was. If they're throwing up three weeks from now, that might tell we can something. deduce yeah. that it was from... Well, the guy was the guy who stopped washing his hands is fine. He had no difficulty. <laughs> I still can't believe insane. that was his fix. Well, like, it doesn't seem like it would have that much of an impact. Can't argue with his success. Uh, there was no vomiting at the gymnastics arena. Certainly not for Suni Lee or Simone Biles. Here's Simone. For me personally tonight, um, it means the world to me, and it's just so crazy. I don't want to compete with Rebecca no more. I'm tired. Like, she's, she's way too close. I've never had an athlete that close, so it definitely put me on my toes, and it brought out the best athlete in myself, so I'm excited and proud to compete with her, but <laughs> I don't like it no more. I, it's, I'm getting uncomfortable, guys. Like, I don't like that feeling. I was stressing. I swear I've never Thank seen you, you that stressed yeah, in my stress. life. <laughs> For me, personally. That would be Simone, and then, of course, Suni first, and yeah, she was stressed, but in the end, it didn't really matter much. She wins by a couple of points. Her sixth career Olympic gold medal, ninth medal overall. First female gymnast to win nine career medals at the game since your gal, Nadia Komenich, in 1980. And she's got more events. This was the all-around final today. They've got more events, you know, the, uh, the, the event finals, the vault, the beam, the floor, uneven bars, everything that comes with that. I think she's competing in three of them. St. Paul's Suni Lee. Backs up her Olympic gold medal in Tokyo with a bronze medal today, including an absolutely fantastic floor routine. Her music, by the way, is I, is my favorite floor routine music. It's very dramatic. Feels like it's music that's been through some stuff, Dan. And she has, which is has. what Suni Lee has been through. And so, a big night for the Olympic women again, with uh, Simone winning the gold and Suni winning the bronze. Well, and as uh, John Roethlisberger told us, Dateline Paris in the three o'clock hour of the broadcast. Um, the, the, she needed, Suni Lee needed that floor exercise, uh, you know, upgrade. I mean, she, that was her at her best and that's what put, catapulted her back into that uh, particular position. You know, you're really good in the case of Simone Biles, you know, you're really good when people are looking, not because they're rooting against her, but just looking for a, a you know, horse race. For any sign of vulnerability, oh, she's behind after that. Whoa, the uneven bars. What's that mean? That's when you know you're good, right? It's 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 that that it's it's her in the field pretty much, and uh, she maybe did show a little bit more vulnerability. But everybody knows that. I mean, floor exercise is where she's still going to dominate, and she was very good there. And um, I don't want to get too you know into the weeds, but. A lot of this, the scoring is deceptive because as you go along, what the experts know is that, well, yeah, but her, the difficulty of her routines to come. The old start value. Yeah, it, it may, are, are such, are so different that she's, unless she li- literally falls on her butt uh, or on her face, she's not going to uh, lose. She's too good. And so we're, we, this is one of those historic Olympic individuals at this point. She has elevated herself to that place. And let's remember again. What a different world, sports world it was for her, right? We were we were in the debate about what's about mental health, what's about just avoiding what everybody else in that position has to do when it comes to talking with reporters, etc. And there was even the conversation of maybe she's just had enough of it. Um, we talked with Roethlisberger about that as, as well, but um, she clearly figured a way, a, a, a path to a place of... Excellence. That's where she is. In this case, now we're talking about historic excellence.
And I don't think, I know she's not done this Olympics. I agree with Roethlisberger. She's coming back, man. I, she's come. I, I'd be stunned if she wasn't in L.A. I think she may be afraid of the, of the Brazilian. Well, or she suggested it, or she says, "Bring she it on." Wants to hold her off. Who knows? I, to me, it, at this point, it has everything to do with what you want to do with the rest of your life. Right. And if you're in the mode of, well, I believe it or not, even if I do all the work for another three, four years, I'll still have plenty of life to do all those things. I'll never have a second shot at, at a, a a three you know a, a three time go around right right so yeah I mean I, I to me it, it's 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 as simple as that is what do you want to do are you ready to do other things because it's not like you can skip four years and then I'm going to come back the next time well that right? would be really something. well that would be historic too but I think that's probably unlikely it was an even, emotional even uh, like 15 minutes for the ones of us is in the crowd I don't know if you were watching at this point but they go right yes. from the Olympics I did see that to the pool where Lakeville's Reagan Smith won a silver medal in the 200 butterfly her American record time of two minutes 3.84 seconds was just a little bit behind uh, Summer McIntosh from Canada, who's a phenom, apparently. Uh, she turned in an Olympic record, did McIntosh. So it's the fifth Olympic medal for Smith. 22 years old, was the silver medalist in the 200 butterfly in Tokyo. Also won the bronze in the 100 backstroke and silver in the women's medley relay there. Uh, she's not done. She's got another event as well. She was in the semis for the 200 backstroke and has advanced to the finals. So Lakeville's Reagan Smith picks up another Olympic medal. Now... The A topic, or one of the A topics, if I can pull it up here. So I got to get the score. The United States women's basketball team clinched their spot in the quarterfinals, but it was not easy. What? Belgium. Belgium? Got within four points of Team USA, but when the dust settled, the Americans win 87 to 74. It uh, It was a pretty tight game. For a while. It's the 57th consecutive Olympic win. And as I mentioned... Belgium, you say? Yes. And as Windy, your guy, Brian Windhorse, writes, Mm. Team USA has been so dominant in the Olympics over the past 30 years that even playing a close game causes a reaction. Uh, Aja Wilson, Aja Wilson, 23 points, 13 rebounds. Her second double-double in as many games. Brianna Stewart... How many threes did uh, Caitlin Clark hit for Belgium? Caitlin Clark was at a oh. concert in Indianapolis last night. That was the uh, the Caitlin Clark... Outstanding concert. concert venue, I'm guessing. Did you see the Comic-Con or some board game conference? Basically, no. Charch retweeted the video. Said he had FOMO. It looked like a one of the old Black Friday scenes where Walmart opens the doors and everybody's running with mm. the bulls to try to get that last Toshiba Regza TV for $9. The... Uh, the number of people at some board game expo at the Indianapolis Convention Center is overwhelming. But where else would you rather have a board game expo? Indy. I'm guessing it's the best board game expo they ever had. Did you see the Big Ten basketball tournaments back in Indy back-to-back years now? Mm-hmm. 25 and 26? Are you shocked? I'm not. Well, the only shocking thing is why they're moving it to Chicago again. Vegas is going to have both what the men's us? and women's. We're not in this rotation. What's that all about? I mean, we can... obviously didn't do as good a job as you like to think we always do. No, I just know how it works. Okay. Chicago's in it. Uh, Indy's obviously in it. Vegas is in it. And I think Detroit has a women's tournament sometime in the next four years. Mm. So the women, Dan, with a little bit of a tight squeeze to get into the quarterfinals. I honestly don't even know who, what what countries are, are, are suggested our as our toughest threats, even though we're supposed to dominate. Is Belgium at the top of the list? Or is that what's concerning people, that they really weren't? I, I mean, I don't think. Yeah. How did uh, how did now they're uh, saying it was kind of a home game because Brussels apparently oh, come the Belgian border is less than twenty miles away from where they're playing. Okay, okay. that's what Wendy said. I'm the idiot. So come on, man. it was a hostile crowd towards them at times. Oh look at Sabrina getting... Inescu's shushing the crowd after she. Uh, oh, are you you got to be kidding? I'm looking me. at the picture right oh, now. Oh come on, she's shushing the crowd. Shushing the crowd yeah. after we knock off Belgium. So Belgium is good. This? They're oh, the they current good. European champions. Oh okay, so they're legit. Yeah. All right. And the U.S. committed 15 turnovers, which helped Belgium may, stay within may, reach. Maybe it is the sin. I don't know. I've, I'm getting uh, conflicting reports on what the actual, authentically proper uh, pronunciation is. So we'll go with your sin, I guess. I don't know. until, for, Or is it supposed to be say sin, sin, like very French? Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't have any idea. Uh, it's, lo- the, it's the polluted river. Famous that the famous polluted river that runs through Gay Perry. Is that a better way to do it? I think so. Okay. Let's do this because 
The Twins are off today. The Vikings are off today. There's not a ton going on. I'm just going to play the short one for the last Olympic update nugget. Your gal Katie Ledecky is now the most decorated American woman in Olympic history. Mm. Earned a silver medal today in the 4x200 meter relay and has uh, now broken a tie that she held with three swimmers to win her 13th medal. She's got eight golds, four silvers, and one bronze in her Olympic career. And yesterday, you may have seen her with another 1500 meter route where the camera people, Dan, basically have to do the all 22 to get the other competitors in the in the pool on your TV screen as you're watching Ledecky. She owns now the top 20 yeah, that's, times in the 1500 meter of all time. That the seems top 20 times to me. ever. Yeah. And that's uh, Ledecky. She won another gold yesterday and then another silver today. No, we're happy for her. That's a pretty good run, I'd say. Is she coming back in four years? She probably could. Yeah. She's met her match in a couple of different events, but in terms of the really long ones, she has no peer. Uh, anything else Olympics that happened today that I need to bring up? I think that covered the water. I'll, I'll give you one other. Well, I'll tell you what. Well, I, I can mention it next segment because I want us to, to stay on schedule because there was something else that caught my eye yesterday. And we're kind of going to use this next segment as a um, combo platter, potpourri segment in which we cover several utterly and completely unrelated stories. Is that okay? And then we'll prepare for the inbox at the bottom of the hour. Yeah. It's an interesting day at the inbox. The French on Bryant. Well, KFI and text line to be more accurate, 646 um, Some of these, most of these not really worth, I think, um, obsessing over. Um, Austin in, in Apple Valley does ask this. Can't wait for the three-on-three -three basketball coverage where the men and women are now combined one and seven. Is that true? Well, I saw the men lost to Latvia today. I think it was Latvia, 21-19. Yeah, things don't seem to be going too well. Uh, this is a callback to um, earlier um, complaints and compliments during the John Roethlisberger visit. Dan Winnesota writes, who knew there were gymnastics, sharks, and jets? Everything. Uh, it's it it doesn't stop, does it? That's one hundred percent true. Um, let me get to a couple of A section items that caught my attention. That uh, I, I don't think necessarily we need to spend a lot of time on them, but I do believe they are, shall we say, worth a uh, a moment or two. So um, I think the news most people by now know that the Wall Street Journal reporter. Evan uh, Gershkovich, who's who is, uh, well, basically held hostage. He was imprisoned in uh, in Russia. Correct. Um, is finally freed. He has been freed. This was one of those elaborate prisoner swaps, in which um, the Ruskies get some some folks back. We get him back. The number of other people as well. The Wall Street Journal piece had a fast that that's who he wrote for or writes for. Um, a fascinating nugget. The Russian Federation had a few final items of protocol to tick through with the man who had become its most famous prisoner. One, he would be allowed to leave with the papers he'd penned in detention, the letters he'd scrawled out, and the makings of a book he'd labored over. But first, they had another piece of writing they required from him, an official request for presidential clemency. The text, moreover, should be addressed to Vladimir Putin. The pro forma printout included a long blank space the prison could fill out if desired or simply as expected leave blank. In the formal high Russian he had honed over 16 months imprisonment, the journal's Russia correspondent filled the page. The last line he submitted, a proposal of his own. After his release, would Putin be willing to sit down for an interview? And as the individual who brought that to my attention noted, so another reason Gershkovitz wasn't released earlier is that he couldn't get his massive cojones through the prison door. I got to tell you, Garzi, I don't think I'd have the guts. Would you? To say, oh, by the way. Can, can I get five? Can I get five minutes with you after the fact? I, I, I'd like to think reporter through and through. That's what I do. I report. Got an interview. Opportunity here. Could have an exclusive. But I got to believe after... What he seemingly endured, I probably would have played it a little closer to the vest and said, I don't want to piss anybody off here. 
How's that going to be taken? I mean, would he take it as a compliment or would he take that take it as, as a rip? What we don't know, I guess, is whether uh, Putin has answered yet. Because that would be the ultimate step, wouldn't it? That he ends up actually with an interview of the guy who um, uh, pretty much ordered his um, his arrest and his incarceration, etc. Do you think that the press secretary for Putin even brought him the request? You know, we get that a lot. Like, well, did you ask him? Do you think that ever went to his desk? <laughs> That's another very good question. A lot of times guessing, they kind of they kind of screen it out. I'm you know? guessing that president gets a lot of requests. I don't think we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're not gonna take this one. To I'm him. not sure we're gonna hand this one to Putin. He might because because you, if you're the person who hands him the request, you got to worry about the possibility that your head's gonna get lopped off, right? Yes, yeah, so I think you might have to worry about that all the time. Well, so that's true, but even more so, you try to limit all contact. Yeah, probably you might be right about uh, about about that. A couple people are asking whether we're going to get into the um, the boxing discussion controversy. My intent is to do that between six and six thirty this evening. Between six and six thirty, as I know, it's getting um, a lot of attention, and we've talked about the the these stories. But what there may be some particulars in this story that indicate that that the usual culture war, the the most of the culture war debate may not, believe it or not, apply to this particular case. Right. Even though at the front end, that's what people want to believe. It's like raging that, which, right now, though, which again, despite all that. For me, doesn't mean I've said this before. No I do questions. not think you have to be transphobic to raise questions about who competes against whom. The issue here is whether this even represents what people think. Some people have suggested it represents. Did you see the news? Um, you know, the Israelis have nailed a number of leaders, including the Hamas leader, Ismail, H-A-N-I-Y-E-H. Did you see how he was assassinated in Iran this week? I he, didn't. He was killed by a bomb smuggled into his guest house months ago. That's what Middle this is from the New York Times, Middle Eastern officials are saying. So... The backstory there might be a Netflix series. Is it, so if I understand this correctly, the bomb is smuggled in months ago, but it, you got to bide your time for when you wait, is the right moment. I guess when you set somebody sets it, does he? I guess in part you want to be sure he's there. Um, that sounds like a Mike Hurley story for me, but uh, maybe we'll get him on soon. And um, there's, we talked yesterday with Kessie about whether our your guy Walls is going to be the guy. Um, there's more sentiment for the Pennsylvania governor. What's his name? Shapiro, right? Yeah, Shapiro. Here's a quote. This is from uh, New York Magazine uh, political guy. See, see if, see if he'll ever get invited to Minnesota after this observation. Walls's shtick about Republicans being weird is fun, but there's more value in the ability to empathize with and appeal to Republican voters than mocking their leaders. <laughs> ain't gonna ain't gonna be invited here anytime soon, is he? New York Magazine political guy. <laughs> Walls is he? That's kind of sounds kind of patronizing and condescending, doesn't it? Walls is shtick, very dismissive. Right. Oh, he says it's fun, like it's his bit. It's kind of fun, but the shtick. I thought you'd get a kick out of that as well. And we're gonna. When are we gonna know? Is it next Tuesday? I thought it was Tuesday. They're gonna appear Tuesday. Whether the the question is whether it might leak sooner. I thought I saw somewhere too. that Shapiro's canceled all of his trips this weekend. Oh, is that right? Plot thickens. He had some. I don't know. He had some type of events or rallies or fundraisers or something this weekend. I thought I saw that within the last couple mm, of hours. Interesting. Well, yeah, and people think that might be a tell. We'll see. Um, how devastated uh, are we going to be in Minnesota? Because it's been built up a lot. We've gotten a lot of um, national pub. A lot of Democrats have fallen in love with the rhetoric. Many of them probably have no idea about what he's actually done as governor, but right. they love that again is sign of the world we live in. It's a very performative political world in which we live. And right now that's what you're looking for, right? Sound bites. That's what, and, and an attitude, you know, a feistiness, a vibe. He's feisty, which by the way, in itself is interesting because we like to think of ourselves as passive aggressive 
and we don't play those kind of feisty games, right? We leave that to the politicians in other places. Isn't that ironic? And I'm not even sure within the state, feisty is the word that would generally be used related to Tim Walls, would it? Most of the time? Occasionally, but not as like, oh, that's first word that comes into your head with right. Tim Walls, feisty. Pitbull. Yeah, Pitbull. I, I didn't think so. Yeah, not Although really. it, it has come in handy for many Democratic, uh, I should say vice presidential hopefuls over the years in both parties. Inbox is coming up. How are we doing? Decent? Outstanding. Oh, good week. We're out. It's outstanding and always improving. Outstanding. Well, this has been built up to be a significant uh, edition of Dr. Dan's Inbox, often on at 430 on Thursdays, but we move it to 530 to give the listeners more of an opportunity to contribute. And Garzi says they have not disappointed today. So let's get started. It's time. Dubai? Nobody yet. Okay. It's available. JG at KFAN.com for any last minute submissions. Dear Dr. Dan, I'm tired of the vitriol in this town being spewed at club owners. Ooh. Fans long for a winner. We give them one, but then they whine we aren't doing more. We signed a bona fide superstar free agent two years ago. We trade for an ace starter and extended him. Sure, we lost a good pitcher in free agency. But have you seen B Ober lately? Or Jay Miranda's rebound? Or maybe start believing in B Lee? This team, Dr. Dan, is right-sized and ready for success. <laughs> oh, and for the incessant complainers that couldn't see us on TV, plenty of tickets are available, as can be seen in our 24th-ranked attendance. Ooh. You think an M. Lorenzen or J. Flaherty is going to be the difference? Show up in the stands. I know I may live in Edina, but not everyone can both have their cake and eat it, too. Apoplectically yours, J. Polad. <laughs> It's interesting because our sources indicate that Jay Polad has been hard to get a hold of, but maybe it's because he was crafting letters like this. The, the letter of that that brilliance takes time, I think, to put uh, indeed together. Um, it is interesting because earlier when we had um, A. Gleeman in studio for the first time this season, very emotional reunion, I got a couple texts. Dr. Dan received a couple texts from people saying, you know what you guys aren't admitting? Most Twins fans just like to complain, and it doesn't matter what the team does, they're going to complain. Dr. Dan calls that another one of those straw man arguments, in that just because there are some individuals who fall into that classification, you throw it out there, and it apparently makes it easier to dismiss the larger point, which is most fans are pretty reasonable about not, dem- not expecting the world but expecting something message-wise a little different than coming off your best season in forever. Ah, we're going to cut her way back. 30 to $35 million back because we need to right-size the payroll. Are those whiny fans who had no choice but to notice it when those words were proclaimed and they were indeed confirmed as accurate? So be careful with the straw men arguments that, that, that come up every now and again about, oh, Twins fans always expect to get, get the next Otani. No, they don't. Most of them are more reasonable than that. But those are that's used to dismiss any criticism of, of how, you could say, unambitious the Twins have tended to be at the trade deadline. Same with fans. Oh, why bother with them? They, they, they're going to whine no matter what. They, they could win 105 games and they'd whine. Really? No, there's always going to be idiots who are on the fringes, but once again, you are changing the subject conveniently to the fact that most fans are saying, yeah, I like, I'm encouraged by what this team did in the regular season. They should feel pretty good about that. But even some players admitted to the athletic, uh, yeah, it would have been nice to add some things. We didn't really expect it. They've been, most of them have been here long enough to know how this thing works. So I would say, um, not so respectfully to Jay Polad, you can't be foolish enough to set the entire, I guess, tone for this season with those stupid-ass comments that you made public about right-sizing the payroll and wonder why folks might, even in a good season, not a great season, but a good season, have to be convinced that it's worth coming along for the ride. It's time for Dr. Dan's Inbox. Oh, we get letters. We get your letters. I like this 
one because this is going to make you think, I Ooh. think. All time. <laughs> Dear Dr. Dan, I heard your producer talking about the music for my floor routine in Paris. That song is from Lindsey Sterling. It's named Eye of the Untold Her, and it's about perseverance and overcoming obstacles. So my question for you, Dr. Dan, if you were an Olympic caliber gymnast, what song would you perform to for your floor exercise? Thank you, S. Lee. That's a really good question. I, I thought so. Well, it's a hard one because, you, you know, we all have our favorite songs. For floor exercise? For floor exercise. Taking the drink of coffee, you're thinking about it. Elle Sterling, by the way, do you know Lindsay Sterling? I do not. You might recognize her. She's like a violinist, like electric violin. Oh, okay. She was on Dancing with the Stars. Right. That's how I got to know her a few years ago. She's, I mean, no pun intended, electric. It's She's outstanding. What would the song be this for is Dan a, Barrero's? This is a stumper. Floor exercise. You know what it might be? <laughs> it might be, because I think the tempo would work. And I think it's upbeat enough, yet classic enough. It might be Frank Sinatra singing Fly Me to the Moon. It might be Fly Me to the Moon with Frank Sinatra. What okay. Think? I, I think it could work. I think it'd be fun. I'd like to see it tried. I'm not sure anybody wants to see me in the floor exercise. Dr. Dan, floor exercise. <laughs> there might be a, a, a couple of uh, disappointing uh, disappointed people. I would say. So Fly Me to the Moon Sinatra. Yeah. I think that would be good. Because they mix it up too, like Simone had Simone started with Taylor Swift, "Ready for It," and oh, then right. she transitioned into some other song. You can kind of splice it. So if you had another, you know, if you wanted to, you know, yeah. set the tone sure. with "Fly Me to the Moon," yeah, you could you, you could, could pivot to something else you, if you wanted that's to it. as well. You got to probably change tempos depending on what you're doing during the floor exercise. But yeah, I think um, I, I I think it might work actually. Maybe we'll play it later. I'm envisioning it. Okay. We'll, we'll play less than 30 seconds, maybe. <laughs> I don't think. Oh, that's about right. It. Forgot about that. Yeah, I thought about pulling it up and just chancing it, but it's yeah. not worth it. It's another good one. Dear Dr. Dan, you and our franchise have a long and sordid history. Within a day of unpacking your Bermuda shorts from your lifelong Texan-sized suitcase in 1986, <laughs> you were openly ripping Bernsey and B. Schnelker in the S. Tribune. You then ripped the new Sheriff D. Green relentlessly as you and your cabal of media jackals eventually ran him out of town as you intended all along. You openly bludgeoned Chile for years on these very airwaves with an enthusiasm previously unseen to mankind, and you're still doing the kick-ass offense bit with that Brad Childress. And it still continues to this very day. You mock and ridicule the majest uh, majesty of the culture shield. And after all that, you have the nerve to ask us for water? You are not in our family, Dan, and you sure as hell aren't our friend. Uh, then again, you know what? I'm in a forgiving mood. I'll choose to take the high road on this one. After some consideration, I'll allow you to enter my four walls on Wednesday around 530. Surely there is no chance of another 100 years flood in Egan during that time. <laughs> right, Dr. Dan? With stakes in the ground, F and family tent. <laughs> That's pretty well played, actually. Well... I would say maybe Dr. Dan made some inroads with KOC yesterday. I thought it went. It was a fairly affable conversation. He did eventually get into the bit and provide water. And I believe, and I want you to, to hold the audience to this, I believe that if this is the, finally the season when KOC abides by his pledge to run the bleeping ball, Dr. Dan should receive significant credit for key, keeping on him, being tenacious on that issue, and challenging him in our most recent conversation yesterday. One of these times, maybe it actually got to him, and the light bulb went off. He said, you know, forget the water nonsense. Guy might be a great offensive mind. And maybe by doing it, I end up looking even greater as an offensive mind because my passing game will actually, might not throw as much, but it might actually look more explosive if I commit to something called the run.
The best part of the water thing yesterday, did you catch it when he handed you that very expensive and exclusive water that you have to open with the actual opener? Yes. And he said, you can't get this water in there. He <laughs> did say that. That was, that good. was, that was such well a flex. That was very well played. That was an That's amazing true. flex. There was a lot of other things in there, though. We ate them all and drank them all. Well, we we thought it was our last meal. That's it. We get your letters. Dear Dr. Dan, do you ever get what you wanted but realize now it's not exactly how you wanted it? As a crowning career achievement, I got to pick my team and purposely avoided all the youngsters with the hype and fans. I've let others take the heat for that decision, but a lot of it was my call and exactly what I wanted. Don't ask me questions about it, like ever. Today, with no good storylines, they moved our games to Lil, or Lily. Lil, I think you're right. Which is two time. hours outside of Paris. Paris. Yeah, whatever. It's two hours outside of Paris. They can't give away tickets for 24 euros. Anybody could get a front row seat. The attendance is lowest of any game being played right now. For fans back home, our games are on Peacock 4, which evidently is a separate Peacock subscription that nobody carries. <laughs> I'll never say this publicly, but this is not the way I thought the Olympic experience would be. <laughs> the team will win gold easily, but if nobody sees it and nobody attends, did it really happen, Dr. Dan? See Reeve Gretz. Whoa. See Reeve Gretz. So, did you say we advanced to the quarters already? That's yes. already in the books? Yep. Okay. And it's supposed to be easy the rest of the way? Easier? I don't know. I, so, the, the complaint there is because of the, the the actual venue is not in the City of Lights? I guess it's not, yeah. Well, I think... It's close in, to Belgium, like I said, well, yeah. which I didn't know. I can't believe you're actually falling for the, the I Belgian... I just read what Windhorst reported. Home, home court advantage. Have you ever... Have Are you ever really been in the Belgian no. House of Pain? No, I guess I, I okay. to be honest, I guess I haven't. I'm probably not giving Belgium proper respect, I'll admit. The fan base or the team or both? All of it. Yeah. Maybe even the country. Right? Have you ever been to Belgium? No. Neither have I. I've never been anywhere over there. Been to Brussels? No. America first. Yeah. America first. Love it or leave it. Minnesota first. That's one Minnesota. So, We're going to get to him in a second. I Look, I, um, I think there's a lot of prelims that are all over the place. I wouldn't be all that. I assume... What about when we get to the medal round? Where where is that taking place for the women? I don't know. I would assume it's in Paris. I gotta believe it's it's gay Perry. I wouldn't I wouldn't be. But it's C Reeve, so you know. She how did she take? Uh, did she get like questioned a lot on her our inability to dominate this game? Was there? I there, didn't see did any post game press post game scrum. No, I didn't see anything any Caitlin like that. Clark C Clark questions today. Man, I don't know. That's yeah, possible. Man, could have been so fun. Could have been so it's fun. Time for no Dr. question. Dan's inbox. Oh, we See, I didn't even realize they played. That's the problem. That's it. If it, if if C. Clark had been with them, everybody would know when yeah, every one of their games true. are. Just flat out true. You know what's been helpful? Um, I didn't know they played either until the Timberwolves and Lynx. They're doing a good job of every day. They send an update of where you can watch the players. Yeah. So, like, they'll say Rudy in France are playing here. Nikhil in Canada are playing here. Nafisa Collier and Cheryl Reeve are playing here. They give you – they're doing a good job of at least keeping me posted. So, I can – like, yesterday, we were, I was watching the fourth quarter on the perch of Team USA, of the men's team. Yes. I was watching that. So, then that today, is, I said, oh, where? what channel was it in? Oh, I know the Wolves and the Lynx. They sure. Me, That's smart. They're doing a that good job. Smart. That they're is smart. Because otherwise, it is kind of hard, especially with the time difference, to extremely, not pay attention all the time. Extremely, extremely. Now, I – let me give you, I, I meant to get to this between 5.15 and 5.30. I thought, I'm going to need help on this because I, I looked it up and I couldn't find it. But I don't think I hallucinated it. I thought I watched on one of the, you know, like, well, if you have direct TV, it's in the 240s. Like 2.42, there's 2.42.1, 2.42.2, 2.42.3. And it's all, it's, it's, it's part of the package of Olympic channels available to you for you know via either NBC or I guess Peacock, and I happened upon with Giovanzi a badminton match. This was a doubles match, okay. And I thought it matched China and Taiwan, two teams that don't much like each other. Exactly, and it was. Well, again, how much badminton competitively has Dr. Dan watched? Probably not that much other than the Olympics. We lost ourselves in the eyes of this competition. It went into overtime because you got to win by 
two, I think, once you get past 21. And they went on and on and on. It was the old best of three. So this was the third game of the three. And it's exactly, I'll say again what I did the other day, what I love about these Olympics. I didn't even know what I was watching at first, but I couldn't stop watching it. I don't know. And I assumed, like you say, well, politically it's juicy. Yep. If I was reading the symbols right, maybe I wasn't. But regardless, there's no other time where you're going to do that, right, other than the Olympics. But in the Olympics, it doesn't have to, for me, include the United States. Right. And it, 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 it can just include an, a very competitive match between, in this case, four different competitors. And it was wonderful. We, we, we stayed with it until we won it, and I, or until it was over, and I think Taiwan won it. Now you'll check in on it the next time. But I time. can't find it online anywhere. So did I hallucinate it? No, you definitely didn't hallucinate it. Okay. Did you see the picture making the rounds of the 51-year-old silver medalist in one of the shooting How about that? Yeah. I mean, he looks like a born villain or a Bond villain. He's got like a T-shirt on and probably like some jeans, and he's just out there sniping. Tremendous. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Only in the Olympics. That's it. Only in the Olympics. That's the beauty of it. That's the... And real quick. I don't want to get a... You know me. I hate to get on a soapbox, but... If you go all the way back to the early complaining we got from a couple people about God, you're gonna you're gonna talk women's gymnastics again from the Olympics, and you're having this this guy on from Paris. Well, this guy happens to be an accomplished Olympic, well, just a gymnastics broadcaster, three time Olympian, three time Olympian who has connections to the University of you know was a standout at the University of Minnesota. Dad was the coach, and he's there in the arena covering it. We're getting the opportunity immediately on a big day in gymnastics to chat with him it's epic it's 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 tremendous but, it's epic. but leave all that out and i'd say it's once every four years that we go down this road we're not i'm not going to apologize for it i don't think you want to apologize no for sir it. doesn't mean you have to love it i'm not demanding i'm not socially engineering here that others have to to love the olympics but it's not like we're doing this i don't know Eight days a month, 12 months out of the year. We do this literally two weeks every four or every three, depending on COVID, Olympic years. That's it. That's the only time we do it. But we're not going to run from it because the stories are rich. They're good. They're interesting. They're compelling. And in the case today... There was also a rather significant Minnesota angle and a rather significant United States of America angle. End of soapbox. It's time for Dr. Dan's Inbox. Dear Dr. Dan, I hope you're sitting down because I've got a plot twist better than any of your Apple Plus TV soap operas. Remember that centrist guy who ran for governor in Minnesota? Surprise! It's me, unveiling my true progressive colors like a plot twist in a TV drama. I've been hiding my inner Bernie Sanders for too long. Universal health care, radical climate action, comprehensive social justice reforms, you name it, I'm all in, baby. I played it safe to get elected in Minnesota, but now it's time to set my sights on something more. So how about it? Vice President Walls has a nice ring to it, don't you think? Together we can push the envelope, stir the pot, and make some real change. Looking forward to your support. After all, we here in flyover country need a little excitement and recognition. One Minnesota? How about one America? <laughs> T-Walls. How, I, I sense, Dr. Dan senses he wants this. He's gotten a taste of it. Yeah, and it's I, intoxicating. I think he wants it bad. I really do. I, I think he's going to be devastated if he doesn't get it. Um, remind me tomorrow... What's our guest lineup right now tomorrow? Guestling, Corey Provis, oh, and right. Lavelli Neal. All right, III. so we're we're fairly guest heavy. I, so I, I don't know if we have how much time we'll have, but we need to spend some time on a I thought a very interesting, tough, but I would also suggest fair analysis on the the walls that you could say national folks don't know because they just they've come to even know the name. From your guy, Blois Olson, who um, we've we've talked about before and quoted from time to time. We, I, I, I don't know. It's been a while, I think, since we've had him on. But there were, I, there, I thought there was, it was, what I liked about it was there was more than surface analysis on the way he's gone about governing. And I don't think it was un- vicious. 
I don't think it was necessarily all negative. I thought it was critical at times, but I thought a number of significant points were raised. Some of them uh, we got into with Kessler yesterday. There's probably more to get to, but remind me if we have time tomorrow, I'd like to quote from it. It's time for our doctor. Dr. Dan, you've been at camp a couple of days, so I trust your opinion. How's the new rookie quarterback looking? He's got high expectations. Let me tell you the important things to look for as I have personal experience. Number one, how is his pocket presence during seven on seven? (laughs) Number two, how vocal is he in the huddle? Number three, how does he handle the media jackals when he makes a mistake, whether it be correctable or easily correctable? These nuggets, Dr. Dan, will provide a picture of success. <laughs> C. Ponder. Whatever happened to C. Ponder? He's, 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 the, he's the plus one. He's, he's the Kessler of he's that relationship, in New York. right? Yeah, he's living in New York with S. Ponder. Is he doing anything? I saw via her social media, he started some type of life after sports firm consulting no. for athletes bit. Did we, did we ever have C. Ponder on the show? C. Ponder? Yes. I think we had him, or did I have him at the fair? I Seriously? Feel, yeah, he came with Kay Rudolph one day, when right after they were drafted, like the summer. Oh. I don't know if that was with you or if that was Cake Show. I honestly don't remember having him on, but that doesn't mean we didn't. I'm sure we had him at camp. Did we? I'm sure He's we did not at a good least quote. once. It's not that interesting. Well, he was nice and affable. He was affable. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really have... I think he wanted to be... really have a whole lot to quotable, say. But the problem was his play was louder yeah. than anything, and that was, I think, the issue. You know, let me ask you a, a, a controversial question here, now that we're on the uh, subject of the Vikings. It's not really necessarily C. Ponder related. But I, <sighs> I've been told by a reliable female source... That, I wish I could remember the term that she used, but the suggestion was that KOC, considered by most an attractive man, oh yeah, is deceptively attractive. And the theory is that he looks better when he's wearing a ball cap than when he isn't. Do you buy that premise, and do you think well, other I, I women feel my, the same way? I bank my whole appearance on that thesis right there. <laughs> That's ball hat can add attractive. That's my whole life. So, so is that you hiding that you're? But you still you're not bald. No, I know. Oh, so I just feel okay. I you like feel, how I look better with okay, a hat on. Interesting. Than when I don't. Okay. Because what's interesting about it is, as he was approaching the exclusive fan perch, he didn't have a hat on. Really. But then he put a hat on, and but I was. After having been told that, I studied him closely without the hat. I go, has he been exposed without the hat? And I go, I don't think so. I think he still looks pretty good. So I I have suggested to that individual, take another look at him without the hat. Because I'm not sure. I think there's some profiling going on there. I think he's a you know pretty good looking guy. And he's got a presence about yeah, a him. A little bit, and yeah. And some confidence. Yeah. And- I think he knows he looks pretty good. I think Finchie's got a little bit more mystery to him. Oh, big time. I think Finchie's got maybe another layer beyond the obvious. And Finchie never wears a hat with that hair. He doesn't need to. I mean, that silver fox hair is just perfectly clothed. Oh, that hair is remarkable. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Anyway. Trying to think of our other. We should do a a coach attractiveness power rankings of the men's coaches. I have no problem with it. I'm comfortable with it, aren't you? John Hines, he's bald, right? Our new hockey coach. Uh, I can't even know. I, I don't even remember. remember. I can't remember. Well, no, well, I think he is a shaved head or bald. I'm I not sure. That's the distinction. And then Rocco, good looking guy. Rocco. He wears a hat, both at work and when he came in here. That's true, he did, didn't he? He's got the beard going. Yeah. Rocco's got some some ruggedness to him, a little handsomeness. Yeah, he does. He's, yeah, he's a good looking man. We've got, I mean. PJ, you know how I feel about him. He's, in a, hand, he's a good looking guy. He's put There's together. No question about that. Yeah. Um,. Yeah, maybe we do that on, a, on, a, on an off day. We just figure let's let's do some power ranks, some uh, uh, coach. We're sticking with male coaches. Oh no, yeah, we can't we bring the women. In. Coaches no, dead. It, yeah, you can't do that. You, you can't win on that one. Can so. we do that instead of having John Roethlisberger on again <laughs> from France? That's maybe your that's option right now. Yeah, Olympic coverage a, or us, you uh, and me, ranking the attractiveness of our male coaches. Do you have a walk off? I got one. Okay. It's time. We had so many from Jay Polad today, by the way. I'm sorry that I didn't get to all of them. I should have done a Jay Polad medley, but I didn't know if we were going to have enough time. So thank you to everybody that wrote a Jay Polad. 
Dr. Dan's inbox okay. this week. Dear Dr. Dan, having an important dam named after me, <laughs> I was very impressed with the dam building done by someone of my generation. That P. Kessler dam yesterday at training camp was damn impressive. H. Hoover. H. Hoover. Yeah, I. let's just walk it off. Well done. It's called hat fishing. That's the term for individuals, apparently, who look better. That if you force them to take their their hat off, you suddenly don't believe they're quite as hot as they appeared with oh, the hat. Hat, hat fishing. fishing. I like that. That's interesting. Is the term. Hat fishing. Well, I've been hat fishing since 1996. I had my hat fishing stage, <laughs> and I left it. Now, I do wear one when I go out just because the sun. I mean, that's that's all that is, really. But I went through a stage. This was when I was you know, losing a lot of my hair, and the alopecia was getting to the point where you're not going to be able to hide it. Um that I would wear ball caps for a lot of times, uh, a lot of time here at the fan. But then I went to the shaved head approach and just moved on with the rest of my life. Um, wh- explain this analogy. This is from two one eight guy. It's similar. Is this? Is this? I mean, is he talking about the hat thing? It's similar to leaving at six every Friday, and then every day in the winter. <laughs> what do they mean about leaving and then leaving every? When do we leave in the winter? Are we on those? Oh, because we're preempted by Viking stuff or something? I guess. I don't know. Hmm. You can't it's tell. It's always tough for me to translate the text that's been sent in, not by me. <laughs> well, <laughs> you go, what does this mean? Yeah. I don't always know. 218 guy writes, "You yeah, well, no, I don't actually always expect you to know. It's, it's, as you know, it's a bit of a radio bit, but you can't tell me anyone is interested in gymnastics. You're getting paid to shove it down our throats. <laughs> Are we getting paid to talk? Is NBC sending us checks to talk gymnastics? No, they're limiting the music we can play while we talk <laughs> gymnastics. Um, I agree with Dan. I watch a lot of Olympic events that don't even include the USA. I caught myself watching Lithuania versus Australia women's beach volleyball for the whole match. That's an interesting example. Couldn't take my eyes off of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's baby. that's that's not that's not the example I'd use. I mean, I'm not gonna you know admonish you for it, but uh, that well, he's admitting there's some shtick to to that particular comment. But Dan, you've had him on five times in two weeks, and it's gymnastics, huh? We've had him on twice, twice this week. This week, and during the trials, which goes back how many two a months? Month? A month or so? Yeah, late uh, June. We had him in studio. Yeah, correct. Because it was in Minneapolis, not Indy. The U.S. Olympic gymnastics trials were right here at Target Center in Minneapolis. Um, thanks for covering the Olympics. I would, <laughs> well, here's another beach volleyball one, but he. Now I'm not going. I'm not. I'm. I'm afraid to read the rest of it. Um, <laughs> I can totally see Dan doing a floor routine, rolling an ankle that leads into the accidental cartwheel, followed by a painful somersault, and coming to rest twitching on the floor in what resembles the worm. Sounds like he's really thought about that. that. And, or and she. that that could actually uh, be somewhat uh, true. I think. There, it, I, in fact, that might be the best I could hope for under those conditions. Okay, so get the story. I don't have it in front of me about who. Who? I want to start this segment on this subject with a tweet from your gal J.K. Rowling, who has been in the middle of the gender wars for quite some time. Sometimes I think unfairly. Um. She sends a photo of this boxing, this Olympic boxing match that's gotten so much discussion at the at, at, at the aftermath. And she writes, could any picture sum up our new men's rights movement any, or any better? The smirk of a male who knows he's protected by a misogynist sporting establishment, enjoying the distress of a woman he's just punched in the head and whose life's ambition he just shattered. A hashtag Paris 2024. A guy named um, Billy Binion, who is a reporter for a libertarian um, online deal called Reason, who, by the way, has not been afraid to challenge the sort of um, conventional wisdom, in many cases related to gender issues or in, in certainly issues regarding who, who should be able to compete against whom. He writes this, and see if it if it dovetails with what you have read in the piece that you had mentioned to me earlier. 
This seems to be more complicated than a lot of people are making it out to be. Same-sex acts are illegal in Algeria, so it's safe to assume Iman Khalif is not trans. She may be intersex? There's some gray area there, although that has less currency in the culture war. He goes on to write, maybe this makes me soft, but I honestly feel bad for both of them. Uh, Kilef has become the latest symbol of everything that's wrong with trans ide- ideology and the men's rights movement, and it's highly probable she supports neither of those things. I don't know what the right answer is, but it would be great if we could take a second and actually wait for all the information before looking for reasons to crucify people. A- a- Ange- Angela Carini, the boxer who lost and who appears to be a class act, said it well, I am not here to judge or pass judgment. If an athlete is this way, and in that sense, it's not right or wrong, it's not up to me to decide. I just did my job as a boxer. I got into the ring and fought. I did it with my head held high and with a broken heart for not having finished the last kilometer. So Binion seems to be suggesting, um, even though this individual, I think, was, was, was not allowed to participate in international competition recently, that this may that we really don't have any indication that this is a transsexual story, right? This might be something very different in the case of this individual. And by the way, I don't know that that's the last word either. But his suggestion, I think, is a fair one. Whatever you think on this particular issue, and there is room, hundred, I think, a hundred percent for debate. It's a subject that uh, who's the tennis all time tennis great has gotten into it. Uh, Often, oh Martina, Martina never got into this issue. Yep. Who's about as lefty as you can get politically? Big time. Who said, "Hold on a minute here." Yep. Uh, that th- this is a maybe a prime example of this specific example doesn't fit the culture war opposites, yep. right? Which doesn't mean you have to throw out the baby with the bathwater, but it should mean that you should attempt to follow the story, which isn't happening today. No, definitely <laughs> not at all. And I think. As people looked into, because you see, and because this has happened from time to time, we've talked about it. Yes, you've seen when when you have kind of a background of transgender athletes competing, specifically you know males competing in female sports, and you see the differences, and all of a sudden somebody you know wins by a million seconds or wins in a first round knockout or whatever it is, it's easy to take a look at it, see the picture, or see the the video of the punch, right that eventually the one competitor quit and go, oh, wow, yeah, that is bad. But then you, you get the, the real story later, like you said, and I think a spokesperson for the IOC even said she's not transgender. It is an intersex situation. Right. And that's something that we probably know even less about. Right? 100%. So it's, and if anybody cares, they intersex means this woman is considered legally female. Right. Have X and Y chromosomes, the typical male pattern, um, natural testosterone levels in the male range and respond to testosterone in ways typical to men. And in some countries, she's been allowed to compete. In some competitions, she's been allowed to compete. And, and so others, not, right. she is not. And, and there may still be, on that this basis, an advantage. I mean, I'm not even denying that possibility. So what you do with that, I don't know. But this isn't what it, it, it has been presented. It doesn't appear through much of this debate, much of the this day, and much of this debate, not even close. And, and in case, like I said, uh, uh, of uh, Rawling, it's 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 she has made this a big issue, but this isn't the issue she's made big. Uh, it, it, quite frankly, whatever you think of what her, what her position is, whether you want to say she's a pioneer, whether you want to say she's transphobic, whatever the case may be, I think we need to be a little bit more nuanced with her as well. But that's where this particular and it, this story, if the boxer keeps advancing, I'm guessing the story is going to is, it's yeah. going to get bigger as time goes on. Well, and we mentioned it. I mean, Rowling among them, Clay Travis among them, right. Sam Ponder. Second time we brought her up. She's been big on this issue yes. as well on protecting women in women's sports. She's been all over this one as well. But it's not what we've really been talking about the last couple of years. This is a I'm not going to say completely separate, but a lot. A lot. Well, it's not precisely the same. No, for sure. It, yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of differences that need to be looked at. Well, probably. and again, I what, what I do think, I was looking at the athletic story, which I think is the one that you'd mentioned. Mm-hmm. I, you know, there is some some confusion here I, I th- for me about um, the decision in, in this last international competition that um, that she participated in. And yes, I am going to say she, until there's reason to to 100% think otherwise, that 
Um, Here's the IBA statement. Uh, the athletes did not undergo a uh, a testosterone examination, but were subject to a separate and recognized test, whereby the specifics remain confidential. This test conclusively indicated that both athletes did not meet the necessary required eligibility criteria and were found to have competitive advantages over other female competitors. The IOC on Thursday criticized the IBA's handling of the tournament and that they were not that she, that she was not given any due process. Uh, the decision was initially taken solely by the IBI, IBA Sec- Secretary General and CEO. The International Olympic Committee said, citing minutes of the meeting where the decision was made, the IBA board only ratified it afterwards and only subsequently requested the procedure to follow in similar cases in the future be established and reflected in the IBA regulations. Now, I don't know that there's anything in there that says that their original conclu- conclusion was necessarily wrong either. The fact that it has kind of gone both ways, is that a sign of faulty testing? Is that a sign of differences of opinion, quite frankly, about where where the line is going to be drawn? There is ideology as part of this story, unfortunately, across the board. So um, I'll do some more digging tonight, and then maybe we'll see if uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more people writing about this overnight and talking about this into the morning, and we can uh, perhaps carry it forward as uh, as well. Uh, let's pause here and uh, remind you of what we have coming up on a Friday show and what you might have missed from earlier in this uh, Olympics-dominated broadcast. Man. Show wrap brought to you by American Pressure, commercial-grade pressure washer since 1975. It's the bumper-to-bumper bumper show wrap. If I didn't know better, I would say this text comes in from Larry Mondello guy, but I don't think it's him. It's 612. This month marked the 100th anniversary of the first broadcast by WNYC. My great-grandfather told us how exciting it was. Everyone huddled around the radio to hear those first historic words. This is Pat Kessler. This is Pat Kessler. Pretty well played. Mondello guy, I'm disappointed. He got scoops. He got, I mean, that's yeah. that's Mondello material. It really is. And it this ain't from Pat him Kessler unless before. he's got more than, he's, maybe he's got a burner account. It wouldn't surprise me, actually, because he's such a volume shooter. Well, that's true. And it's a workaround. Like, if we see Larry Mandela guy, he might think, oh, they're bored with me today. We can't thank enough our uh, daily contributor to the program for, what, the last six, seven months, John Roethlisberger, who joined us to talk gymnastics. Again. On another historic day for the U.S. women's uh, gymnastics movement. We get gold with Biles. We get bronze with Lee in the uh, all-around individual competition, correct? Yes. A huge day indeed, and uh, Roethlisberger, fresh off, you know, filing live reports for NBC, and you can hear him tonight on the broadcast, um, was kind enough to join us between 5.15 and 5, I should say 3.15 and 3.30, and then it was the emotional return of Aaron Gleeman for an entire hour. Yeah, he's back. I don't know how much he's going to be back because he did give us extensive detail, because I asked, on health issues that have, I think, been largely responsible for his, not necessarily desire, but need to step away from coming in as often, being quite as active as well. But we did get to plenty of baseball, and we did get to plenty of management issues. It was like he never left. Not management issues so much as ownership issues as well. Exactly right. He He didn't miss a beat. So I heartily recommend that if you missed it. And if you got an hour on the treadmill, he'll fill it. Because I think basically we went from 3.30 to close to, we actually went to like 4.34 Yep. with uh, with Gleeman. He even got a couple of Wolves things in as the real Wolves super fan. Um, because we've not had him on the air since the Wolves made their big run through the um, the month of, uh, much of the month of, of May as well. Um, so in that case... Um, What's tomorrow? Tomorrow is Corey Provis Day, which is unusual. Instead of the usual Tuesday, we have him tomorrow, which works out also emotionally well because that'll be the first day that the Twins will be back on Bally if if you're you're a subscriber to Comcast. Although, as again, Gleeman reminded us, long term, it's going to cost you an extra 20. Now, he thinks there's a trial run where you get some freebies for a while so you don't have to pay immediately. 
But he also said check the fine print about what you're committing to regarding, you know, long-term commitment if you accept the trial. But um, Provis has to be in a good mood tomorrow that that dis- that situation has at least been resolved to that extent. Says his anonymity is gone. I was texting with him today. Is that right? Yeah. And I told him I'm going to have a viewing party for the neighborhood. He can talk about the fact that uh, the White Sox are coming to town. The pitiful, hideous Chicago White Sox are in town. It's supposed to mean a sweep, will it? I don't know. Um, tomorrow also means the return of Ben Gessling. And it also means the return of Lavelle E. Neal oh III for a weekly update on <laughs> what is going on in his crotch. Because that's what he hinted at last week. Hinted? There's a, a lot of stuff hint. going on down there. <laughs> that had so, to do with a banana hammock conversation yeah, that, was, that you somehow stumbled us into. It's amazing. It's, it's a, you, I'm, I'm starting to worry about you with Lavelle. <laughs> Like President Trump's aides do. I think you need to stay on the track. You need to stay disciplined. Right. That's too much. Don't fun. ask too many questions. But Lavelle's it's got a big fun. act to follow. Oh, uh, this, and you, I don't even think you know this. We're taping. You know, enough says the Friday show we do. Yep. We tape it during the day, and then it runs seven thirty on Fox Nine Plus, nine thirty on Fox Nine. John Roethlisberger is going to join us via oh, satellite. That's great. As well That's for a short time. for a quickie part of the Enough Said show. It's nice we got around those NBC yeah. rights to have them. It's not a problem. It's all been resolved. All been taken care of at the highest levels. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And we will chat with you tomorrow beginning at 3. That's pretty good. That's pretty good right there.